Hello, thank you so much for joining me. I'm along the Shropshire Union Canal, which is also known as the Shroppy, rather than the usual Trent and Mersey, but I often take you for walks down the towpath. Um, this covers Staffordshire, Shropshire and Cheshire, very much in the countryside areas. So I'm at Bunbury Lock, which is a staircase lock with one, two, and down below the gentleman there, the third lock gate. And their boat has nudged in from the water above the gate into the first of these pools. And in fact, it is wide enough to take two narrow boats or certainly one of the the wider wider beam barges and uh, it was fascinating watching it this couple they've not been on this area for 30 years and it was a very very blustery day so that explains occasional fingers popping onto the camera when i was trying to protect it um, but I was asking him questions about the lock and he said it, it's been 30 years he said I can't remember what I did yesterday let alone 30 years ago so uh, yes it was nice to actually have a chat with someone and such a pity that when he'd agreed to do a little bit of talking to camera that it didn't happen but behind us here we've got stable block which used to stable the horses that towed the, the barges in days of yore before they became motorised. And unfortunately, I couldn't get to look inside, but c'est la guerre. So this boat is, is nearly down to the next level. And I asked the question, do you just have to judge when to open the the gate and I had it explained that when you're leaning on it as he was there that you can actually feel when it's ready and the pressure of your backside on that just actually starts it opening and as he was explaining that so it happened and off he went um, this canal, the Shroppy, it links canals in the, the West Midlands with the River Mersey and the Manchester Ship Canal at Ellesmere Port. <laughs> uh, Manchester Ship Canal. Memories of a school trip. I can't remember if it was early secondary or late primary can't remember but we went on a, a day trippy sort of boat and we were looking at all of the things around and then we were told right it's time for your packed lunch so we got our, our sandwiches out mine were bound to have been tomato sandwiches and we got them out and then looked out onto the water and floating by came a very much dead dog very very bloated and once seen we couldn't stop looking and unfortunately there were quite a few of us who suddenly decided that we really didn't think we fancied our sandwiches anymore but that was the Manchester ship canal and this is the shroppy with my fingers in the way and the boat beginning to nudge through and it's just gliding through with the, the movement of the water. Um, it's a bit like a dog on a lead. The guy has it tethered just in case it goes whizzing off to bang the other side with the wind. But he said, you know, no point in starting the motor when it will do it on its own. So through it comes. And then the gate will be closed behind it and on to the next bit.
just like a puppy, keeping it under control there. Now, heal, but stay with me. That's it, that's good. <laughs> but the, the main part of this Shroppy Canal was the last narrow, the last trunk narrow canal built in England. And it was completed in 1835. And the construction was overseen by the well-known uh, Thomas Telford. And it covers 66 and a half miles with 47 locks. This being one of them. I wonder, does that count as, as more than one? I don't know. I really don't. But there has been lots of restoration along the towpaths, provision of mooring uh, so that there are points for dumping rubbish and emptying loos, etc. Um, rebuilding of locks, maintaining of locks, and some restoration of channels which have become disused and so choked up with reeds. So it's been swapped from being a provider of transport to a provider of pleasure. Um, and I do wonder, and I think I've said this on one of my morning walks along the canal nearby, that I wonder if maybe we will start using barge transport in the future. Mm maybe horse drawn again but then everything these days has to be on demand within the hour certainly not at horse pace to get from A to B and across the water there's a little polytunnel and it's apparently as a little mending place for I suppose bumps and scratches and things on barges I presume they can't do any of the underwater work or anything. Is it the blacking, do they call it? I don't know. But that's handy because just under the bridge there are quite a few boats that are moored with a company that let them out for weekends, I presume days. Um, holidays and I managed to get a look on one so that was great but whenever I see the water gushing through a lock gate like that I think yes I know that water's coming from the pool behind and that had come from the open canal beyond but where's it all coming from <laughs> Where's it going? It can't flow back uphill to get up there. I have visions of the canals up at the top <laughs> gradually empty. But here we've got ridges over the the cobblestones and I, I wondered if that was to help the horses. Or maybe the bridges were too low for the horses and they had to be taken up round the top again big gaps in my knowledge here I am guessing but this is just one of the boats next to the one that I had a look at and boats which the couple who've just been coming through the lock would be soon gliding past on their slow and steady way going through the wonderful English countryside on a blue sky, blowy day. <laughs>